may not look my best today, but we've just driven up along the North Coast 500. We're behind the British lines here. They're designated by the red flags over here. Scottish lines are over there. We've taken a year off to travel the world. So join us on a captivating journey across continents and cultures, from the beautiful islands of French Polynesia to Hawaii to the bustling markets of Marrakesh. Our world trip is a visual feast of iconic landmarks, hidden gems and unforgettable moments. Get ready to explore the diversity of landscapes, taste exotic cuisines and connect with people from all walks of life. Subscribe and embark on this global adventure with us. Oh my God, it was bound to happen. A Fiat 500. The smallest car next to a smart vehicle. So let's see how we fit all our gear in this one. In the lap of luxury. <laughs> Away you go. Look at this. Heaps of room, but we'll soon see. What do you say about this? Not so squeezy? No, it's fine. Not a problem. <laughs> well, we've got all our gear in the back and let's see how we go touring Scotland and an island in our cute little Fiat 500. Well, good morning from sunny Scotland. Bit of an overcast day. It's probably been the better of the last few days that we've had. And we're actually on a road trip at the moment um, doing the North Coast 500, which is a 516 mile road trip, which equates to 830 kilometers. We won't be doing all of that. We will be taking in parts of uh, this uh, very famous road trip in this part of the world. And the road trip actually starts and ends at Inverness Castle. It's been described as one of the most beautiful drives in the world. And we have Peter who's steering the, steering the ship, if you like to say. And I know he's really looking forward to meeting someone. We're going to actually stop off at Loch Ness and we're going to go searching for the Loch Ness monster like most people do. But I don't know how successful we're going to be. It'll be good fun trying. Yeah, well anyway, we'll be taking in quite a few of the beautiful um, scenery along the way and, uh, and we'll share it with you. It's pretty beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. Think of uh, Loch Ness. Think oh, we're actually here. That's right. We're here looking for the elusive Loch Ness monster. I'm pretty excited. We've finally arrived to the Culloden battlefield. We're at the fields of the Battle of Culloden that happened on the 16th of April in 1746 between the English and the Scots. The Scots were known as the Jacobites and they had the support of the French at that time. Unfortunately, the Jacobites, they didn't fare very well against the English, but it certainly was a bloody battle. We're behind the British lines here. They're designated by the red flags over here. And then the Scottish lines are over there, designated by the blue flags. The, um, the English outnumbered the Scots, seven and a half thousand troops to five and a half thousand. So the Scots were up against it. They didn't have a chance at all, did they? Ah, oh, well, they, they certainly had a difficult time with those sort of ones.
There's an old building at the back of the battlefield called Lennox Cottage, which was used as a field hospital during the battle in 1746. It's been reconstructed, but it's a good reminder of what it looked like back in those days. On the battlefield, there's ceremonial stones that remember the different clans of the Scottish people who fought in the battle back in 1746. We continue driving along the North Coast 500. The drive offers stunning coastal scenery of rugged mountains and remote fishing villages, plus a wealth of unforgettable experiences. We arrive to Piper's Cave, our home away from homestay, for the next few days while we explore deeper into the northern highlands of Scotland. my best today but we've just driven uh, along the North Coast 500 trail and we've just arrived to a place called John O'Groats and it's a small village that's almost at the northern most tip of Scotland. I think Dunnett's, um, Dunnett's Bay is it's not that far from here anyway so that's the northernmost. John O'Groats is a village situated in Cathness, almost near to the very top of Scotland. It was named after a Dutchman by the name of Jan de Groot, who built the famous house sometime between 1488 and 1513. Jan, or John as he became known, operated the ferry from here to the Orkney Islands. He charged one groat for the ferry, hence the name John O'Groat. Here comes Peter, all decked out for uh, the weather. <laughs> How is it? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, what have you got to say about John O'Groats? <laughs> oh, spectacular view and everything, but 19th of July, in the height of the Northern Hemisphere summer, and it's like six degrees out there. <laughs> it's freezing. It's like I know that we're in the Scottish Highlands and we're it's almost at the northernmost point. But today it's unbelievably cold. And we're dressed for it, but it's just so cold. And it's raining. Yeah, oh, the rain's not too bad. I think I'd prefer you know rain and a bit of warm weather but not this wind chill factor that goes right through you <laughs> straight to your bones it's just cold but it's very picturesque oh, it's, it's lovely you can yeah. understand why people come here very yeah, very nice yeah absolutely gorgeous the drive to here has been great and um looking out to the orkney islands um i'm trying to get um a photo or some video of the orkney islands but that wind's just a bit too cold. <laughs> it's out there. We're at the most northerly point of mainland Scotland at Dunnett Peg. Made it! We made it and it's still freezing cold and we're just to get, about to get wet but it's good to be here at the most northerly point in Scotland. All right let's make a run! So the lighthouse here at Dunnett Head was built in 1831 by Robert Stevenson and he was actually the grandfather of the famous Treasure Island author, Robert Louis Stevenson. Dunnett Head was used in World War II as a radar station 
to protect the major naval base at Scarpa Flow on the Orkneys. You can imagine being a young radar operator being based here in World War II in the middle of winter. Be pretty bleak. We left the Northern Highlands and made our way south, stopping at a town called Daviot near Aberdeen. Some of Peter's ancestry belongs here. We discovered some things unique about this quiet village. It is home to the lone head of Daviot Stone Circle. It is believed to be around four to 5,000 years old, where it's thought that there were funerary and ritual ceremonies performed. Near the Stone Circle in Cannes, is a burial ground with the cremated remains of over 30 people. The ashes of some people were placed in urns while others were laid out in graves. Join us on our next adventure as we swap sails for a 49 foot narrow boat on the Glenglothlin Canal. There was no tacking or jiving on this boat, just tooting and hoping as we navigated around blind corners. We travelled across from England to Wales over the highest aqueduct in the world called the Ponticillae Aqueduct. We enjoyed beautiful scenery, friendly people and a very narrow boat through a very narrow and shallow canal.